Thank you very much, Rupesh Kumar. Uh, I would like to call back our other panelists, and that would be Mark Hicks, that would be Christina Kolesniku, who is be who's going to be joined by Giorgio Rosato, who is the co-founder and chairman of Novability, uh, and also Aeya and, uh, and, and uh, Fabio. Well, ladies, they're there. <laughs> we'll see how many how many of these boxes we can fill up. This looks great. Fantastic. Uh, William, would you like to go with the first question for our panelists? Uh, but be mindful, uh, we would like to, to have an answer from all of you. So if you can keep it within, you know, a minute and not stretch it too far. Well, one of the one of the, the big questions, and thank you all so much this morning has been uh, absolutely amazing. I think um, uh, in my, uh, as we were working out the, the, the program, um, I, had, I had sort of ideas, but I had no idea that this morning would be as powerful as it has been. So thank you all very much for, for participating today. Um, one of the big challenges that, that has come up and it comes up uh, in, in pretty much all of our conversations um, is the, the challenge with now restarting. Uh, we, we've all experienced the downturn. Now we're on the now we're on the upturn with the traffic, and getting people back. Uh, this sort of thing. And my so my question was, I'll start with you, Christina. Um, is is basically, you know, what what sort of challenges have you had with uh, staffing, and and have you found uh, a way to 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 make it work, Christina? Yes, I'm here. Uh, as I said, we have tried, uh, I mean, different things to, to make it work again. So as um, I mentioned before, our three important keys, uh, trainings and uh, provide uh, to all uh, PRMs the same, uh, the same service. And uh, I mean, Something good is happening in uh, our airport, in uh, Aeroporti di Puglia. Uh, so Aeroporti di Puglia uh, has joined the ENAC Autism Traveling through the airport project. So in this case, we have a dedicated room where children in particular can wait for the uh, boarding in a calm and safe environment. They can play, color and do many activities. So in addition, uh, together with the parents, they can book a visit to the airport before uh, the trip, because it is very important for children with autism to know in advance the people and the environment environments that uh, they will find at the airports. Great, thank, thank you, you very much. Sorry, William. Um, I would before uh, I have a question, uh, but before we ask the question, I have another question that's specific to Alexa. So I would uh, I would uh, see if Alexa can join us at some point because it's it's very specific to her presentation. Uh, meanwhile, um, it's a recurring theme: um, um, ambulance versus ramps. Do you? And this is a question for all of you. Uh, do you pref do do you have any preference? And most importantly, do you use both or just one? We can start maybe with uh, with Fabio. We use both. We use both at this point in time. And, we use um, both. And uh, that, that, that much uh, reflects uh, the uh, various uh, um, infrastructure uh, uh, settings uh, of the various parts of the, the, the Fiumicino area. Thank you, Fabio. Steve? Uh, we use both. I think that the infrastructure requires both um, for an airport of our size. Um, I think it's important to understand the aircraft you're working on, the the, the passengers that you're assisting um, and the, the categories and what type of assistance they need. So I think to have a variety of equipment is is within your best arsenal to be able to, uh, to assist passengers as quickly and as efficiently and as safely as possible. Hey. Hi, the question was... You said my name. I thought you said hello. <laughs> uh, no, Steve and Fabio said it. If, well, a lot of it. Yeah, we use both too. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Rupesh Kumar. Yeah, uh, what uh, I was thinking when the innovation comes in and the support comes for the PRM, 
we also think about uh, the in case of emergency and when the uh, the uh, building evacuation and in case of uh, the terminal has to be evacuated we should work out on such certain facilities and devise solutions where in case of exigency or bomb threat or fire incidents how this uh, the incident uh, the prm will be reacting and how best facilities we can provide it, them to uh, evacuate them at the safe zones this is what i feel in a challenging way we have to think about as in a you know uh, world recognized forum and we are talking about worldwide for the facility of prm apart from that accessibility is uh, not only a one person challenge but it is uh, the involvement of all round of stakeholders right from the government user and the airlines and the ground handling agencies those who are handling they should be at equally at the same platform thinking uh, the uh, requirement of a prm as a priority and providing them the best services so they can have full feel good factor and experience through the aerodrome thank you rupesh kumar mark uh, I, I think Steve gave the perfect answer, to be honest, uh, in, in essence of time. The only thing I would say is that we should ban the stair climbers, uh, in, 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 always in terms of um, jet bridge or um, uh, ambulips. Um, and, you know, I, I, that's probably quite a glib answer, but I, I just think the passenger experience and a stair climber is, is particularly poor. So uh, I, I think that's something that we should look to phase out quite quickly. But I'm sure they have their have their place. But um, but yeah, just not a fan of the passenger experience, and uh, it scares the life out of me when I see passengers going up. And... Thank you, and Christina. Christina. Hello. Okay. Yes. Uh, I I mean I think that we need to to make sure all the infrastructure. I think that we uh, that we are still doing that, uh, but we need to put more uh, attention and also more the pressure to 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 all uh, I mean uh, staff. Uh, in the in the airport so they need to to follow the rules and uh, mm, all i mean i would say that all the staff must be vaccinated so we need to vaccinate it as we can give the safe the tranquility to to all prm Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is a, a more technical question uh, uh, over over delay code 19. Uh, as your operation, have your operations see and seen an increase uh, due to pandemic related issues like uh, extra documents, job checks, and uh, um, social distancing, queuing at, at the critical touch points through the airport? Maybe we start with uh, with uh, Rupesh. Uh, yes, you are rightly saying, uh, William. Uh, pandemic has, uh, you know, increased uh, uh, the expenses and the budgets of the aerodrome uh, while dealing with the pandemic. A lot of sanitization, additional activity without any revenue, aerodrome operator and the all the airlines member has to do it. The additional processes without any revenue, and uh, that has to be curtailed uh, with the, uh, you know, such, some systematic measures implementing and uh, the budgeting practices which can cater the requirement of airport operator airlines and users as well so because uh, before the covid uh, this uh, the budget was not there it was a normal operations and in pandemic we have to do an additional sanitization put uh, the automation and a lot of additional activity we have to do it so uh, we uh, we have incurred a marginally 30 to 40 uh, percent more what we used to expend it for the sanitization, cleaning, and touchless operations. So it is, you know, uh, difference altogether of more than 50 percent from the uh, the regular expenses what Aerodrome was having earlier. Steve. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you you asked about delays through COVID. Um, absolutely. Uh, with the increased checks of all the documentation that passengers need, 
um, with the additional checks at border, with the additional checks for pre-boarding um, at the departures end for disembarkation. Um, absolutely, we've had to create uh, a dedicated red arrivals facility in Terminal 4 um, throughout the pandemic, which requires landing um, and either taxiing or transferring passengers from one terminal into Terminal 4 for them to land. That all adds additional time um, and, and time on the ground for, for, for the crew and, and for the uh, for the airlines themselves. Um, but it also adds a significant increase in the amount of time passengers have to spend in the airport. So that all needs to be taken into account when you're when you're dealing with PRMs, PRSs. We've had to ensure that we've got um, the communication right so we can talk to passengers and we can liaise with them and engage with them so they understand all of these different changes um, and how that impacts their ability to travel freely through the airport and I have to say that we're very fortunate to have worked with with Wilson James and the CAA very closely around that that building that piece of work together um, and with the support of, of Wilson James and the CAA we've been able to do it very successfully but it's uh, been a real challenge. Thank you. And I saw Fabio was nodding as you, as Steve was speaking. So Fabio, would you like to add? Very much along the same line, guys, and Roberto, um, I, I, I sympathize with your views. Um, maybe just one specific uh, uh, Roman twist, if I can add. Uh, um, uh, there's uh, uh, obviously a lack of uh, uh, extra EU um, uh, um, uh, inflows and that makes uh, the um, assistance that we provide to PRM uh, on their request more standardized. Um, so you know, in 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 a in a in a very tiring, uh, difficult circumstances, that marginally makes our job a bit easier. Thank you. I. Uh... Yeah, hi. It was really challenging for us uh, because, you know, in Norway we have, um, we we can follow two passengers in this with one agent, but when they started the strict in 2020, yeah, we, we needed to have the one meter so we can just follow one person in the same time. So our budget <laughs> got really bad that time and Norway was really strict to, like, not everyone could come into Norway. So we didn't have so many missions and everything, and it took really long time for every mission. We always say it's like 35 minutes for every mission, but from the COVID started, we may be using one and a half hour in each agent because of the because of the passport control. And they opened last week, so so I'm like really happy now. So and the one meter is gone and everything, but it was really challenging for us at the first and uh, after some times we started to get used to it so now we are starting to get back to 2019 so, yeah thank you mark the, the only thing that, that i i would add is that I, I think um the understanding has been far greater so obviously pre-covid you know any delay um or, or you know was not acceptable and we, we worked hard but i i think uh the understanding of what's causing them and 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 the ever-changing rules regulations policies procedures um ha has meant that the the airports that, that we certainly work out the collaboration uh, as i've talked about with the airport and the airlines um ha has meant that yes there have been an increase in delays but but actually the understanding and through the deep dive uh, has been through has been really positive and constructive um so yeah it's um it's hard to ease though, which is good. So that's that's the upside. Thank you. And finally, Christina. Uh, we have uh, also registered an increased number. So um, it is due to several factors. Anti-COVID pro procedure extends the time. Then uh, the number of non pay notification passengers increased. For example, we went from 80% booked um, and 20% not booked to 70% booked and 30% not booked. So, but I would like to, I mean, to add uh, one thing must be said. Um, 
delay 19 code is often used incorrectly instead of other codes. So my personal, I mean, advice is that both, let's say that this code should be used in more accurate way when assigning a delay code. Thank you, Christina. And, and thanks to Alexa for joining us again. Um, I, I, I asked her back because there was a question that was specific to her presentation, and I'm going to read it to you. Are you able to create a dashboard with passenger services opted versus agent, agent, agent occupancy time? This could help in setting SLAs with the service providers. And then continues, along with real-time data, are you able to set alarms for ground service teams? Is it the data accessible through apps? Yes. So, okay. Thank you, Roberto. So for the first part of the question, yeah, absolutely. That is what we do. We, we are able to compile the data to make uh, dashboards so that the service provider um, can see what's happening so that they can control their own SLA and we can make the SLA specific to whatever that service provider or, or airport requires as their defined level, level of service. So it's completely it can it can be modified to meet the needs of of whether it's the service provider or the airport and uh, the second part of the question yeah absolutely that's what we use the dashboard for it's for alerts in the future but they're also real-time live alerts there's different types of alerts within the system um, even for dispatchers to make sure that every passenger is uh, is treated within the within the time to make their passenger journey um, and then finally, for the for the um, devices, yeah, it's available on. You can connect via tablet or uh, a, a phone uh, through. Yeah. So. Thank you very much, Alexa. Um, I have a question that's directed, I believe, to Steve, and it's regarding equipment that's being trialed at Heathrow. Uh, but it is concerned, to my understanding, it is concerning costs. So perhaps we will forward the question to you privately. So. You, and then you will decide whether it is the That's right fine. time to share. Um, I have a, another question for all the panelists. So it, it is, what is the largest challenge or barrier, being procedural, systemic, or behavioral, facing each speaker in providing the highest level of service they can, excluding COVID and finances? So for, for, for once, we leave uh, the elephant in the room, COVID, out of the picture. Shall we start with Mark? I see Mark he was uh, was moving in a chair on the chair as he, as he was listening. Mark, I was thinking, Roberto, because I think COVID and finance has, has consumed everybody um, for the last uh, two years um, in in PRM. Um, so, so what's our so the question is what's our biggest challenge? Um, I. I I wouldn't say it's a challenge, but I think one of our biggest focuses outside of COVID and what we're trying to do for recovery is just really understand the, the, the changing needs of, of the traveling public, uh, the, the, the PRMs, uh, PRS, uh, and, and what equipment, as Steve's touched upon, the wheelchair, for example, to, to make it a better experience going through the airport, um, fully fully plastic, so passengers don't need to come out of the chair and they, they, they can have a, a more seamless journey. So, so I think outside of COVID, outside finances, um, which I, I sort of get the wheelchair links into finances, uh, I, I would say it, it's around making sure that we're catering for everybody's needs uh, continually. Um, and, you know, um, we're doing much better now on mental health and, and hidden disability than we were five years ago. But there are other things now starting to uh, come to the, the, the fore um, that we just need to um, you just need to make sure that, that we're on top of our understanding. Uh, transgender, for example, in, in, in the PRM population, it is, it's how, how best do, do we, do we uh, assist and, and train around that. So, you know, it, it's just around making sure that, that we're still at the forefront of training passenger experience, but the ever-changing uh, landscape that we, we find uh, of those coming through our, our airports and our service, uh, I, I would think. Thank you very much, Mark. Fabio. Fabio? Sorry. No, what, uh, is the, what is the biggest challenge, excluding COVID yeah. and finances? 
uh, if you put the two together, uh, you, you, you create a, a, an explosive chemistry. Uh, but um, no, I think, uh, you know, one of my aim was to show you that um, uh, financially we, we, we believe we put together um, a pretty sustainable package. Uh, even through these um, uh, uh, very, very tiring times. Um, I think that uh, the challenge uh, ahead of us uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, improving the quality of service uh, um, and uh, uh, an additional stress is provided by the rising uh, PRM ratio. Um, we, we are witnessing uh, a growing percentages of PRM as a total um, level of passenger. Uh, and that obviously creates some strain to our cost structure. Uh, but even more so, um, creates some challenges to uh, the service that we are um, uh, providing uh, on a daily basis. So we have to, you know, provide more for more staff and for uh, uh, more uh, planning attention uh, to make uh, everybody's needs being met. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, Rupesh Kumar. Yeah, Roberto, uh, removing finance and COVID is a food for thought. And without them, really, we I'm thinking what is supposed to be a challenge. <laughs> so the, First thing, uh, what I uh, analysis of understanding PRM needs is a great challenge because PRM itself is having a different varieties and their satisfaction level may not be uh, from the ordinary man's perspective. So understanding their needs and making our infrastructure friendly, friendly to them, and constantly improving your quality where they feel comfortable is a challenge, uh, which I feel from the aerodrome uh, operations perspective. Thank you, Rupesh. Steve. I think the biggest challenge at the moment um, is the challenge that we've really always faced. I think it's how do you personalize a service? Um, how do you bespoke a service? How do you facilitate a uh, and move away from a one size fits all approach? Um, you know, everybody doesn't need a wheelchair. That's not a solution that fits everybody's needs um, to be assisted through the airport. It's fundamentally understanding who you're talking to, who's in front of you, what do they need, how do they need it, what part of the journey do they need assistance for? Um, do they need assistance just through security? Do they need assistance just boarding the aircraft? Freedom of choice. How do we enable our airports to have accessibility built within the fabric of the of the building to ensure that anybody that comes into our airport can uh, can move through the airport as efficiently and uh, as as well as they and as easy as they need to. Um, I think fundamentally that is our biggest challenge: is not just a one size fits all approach. Thank you. Hi. Hey. What's the biggest uh, challenge in, in? Oh, we have many. <laughs> and, uh, and I, let's I forget think, the two big ones. Yeah, I think our biggest one uh, is the SLAs and understand the system. We are starting to learn it, and I, I think we are pretty good. But I don't think everyone is understanding the um, why we need to use it. So uh, in 2021 yeah, and 2020, that's actually our biggest challenges. And yeah, COVID have been a big challenge, but we need to forget about that now. So yeah, it's the SLAs and the milestones and the system, but we are soon there. I mean, we are really soon, <laughs> it's not far away. Thank you. And finally, Christina. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, it's been almost said, um, so even for us, uh, our big challenge is that to, to find out um, a better definition for those who uh, do not really need a wheelchair. So it happened often that uh, 
people uh, who don't know the language, who don't know the iPort, ask for the uh, Romeo wheelchair code. So they ask for our, uh, our help. So I don't think that we need a better definition on this. Okay, the, the, the theme of, as perhaps uh, this is going to be a topic in the afternoon session when we have regulators as well. So the theme of uh, the good usage of SSR codes and, and the pre-booking of assistance. But I would like to ask before, before letting you for, go for the lunch break, I would like to ask each of you uh, one 30 second answer to this very simple question. What do you think will be your biggest achievement in 2022 with assistance to passenger requiring support? And it can be anything. Perhaps it would be nice to hear something that we haven't heard yet uh, during our first part of the discussion. But I'm going to start with Aya. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh my God. I actually, I don't know. You should send me that. Uh question before, but I think it's to understand the customer. And I always say, uh, now we can do it again, thank God. After the mission, I really want a big hug from the customer. I, I, yeah, I think it's that. The biggest hug after the mission and nothing else. And I can just look in the eyes of the customer that they are really happy. Yeah, that's so our happiness. Right. Happiness is your goal for 2022. Happiness is my goal. Yeah. Fabio, ADR assistance, the key goal for 2022. Uh, well, let me use uh, uh, big words. Uh, um, more um, IT interconnection. Yes, I also would love uh, the idea to hug. Uh, all the clients, but we all know that um, this is not a feasible goal. So I uh, do want to interact with them uh, in the best possible way. I believe our PRM clients uh, are um, more prone than others uh, the use of uh, um, intelligent devices, and we should leverage of that and um, you know find the best possible ways to. Um, to 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 um, to get to their hearts um, yeah, without a physical hug, but with uh, <laughs> with uh, an equally important vicinity. Thank you, Fabio. Cristina. Okay. Um, I mean, I would say uh, a big capacity of resilience. So during all the situation, we we fell down, but we also improved to to stand up. So resilience, I would say, in this case. Thank you, Christina. Rupesh Kumar, your key goal yeah. for 2022. Yeah, my what uh, I'll be always, we are customer focused approach, always tell us to make passenger journey comfortable. So here I'm adding it safe because COVID has given us a lot of learning. So our goal will be and the thought process will be to make PRM's journey safe and comfortable through the innovations, what we can do it. This will be the Thank goal. Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Mark. I think to continue our, our vision of, of couch to aircraft, so this is the, the, the piece of work around engaging with the, with the passenger um, even before, they, before they've left home. Um, so we can provide a more rounded journey, uh, more rounded experience, um, less anxiety. Uh, easier said than done, lots of moving parts to it, but um, but that's something that we're very keen to continue working on, uh, is that couch, couch to aircraft. Thank you, Mark. And finally, Steve. Uh, for, for me, for us at Heathrow, to continue to build confidence with our passengers through accessing freedom of choice to give people freedom of choice to travel through the airport the way that they want to um, and, and listening to to our charity partners um, our HAG group um, and taking their advice that's going to be our success for 2022. Fantastic well thank you very much to our esteemed panelists
you have been you have given great contribution this morning uh, and I think we all go away uh, much wealthier in terms of knowledge and information that we were just an hour ago. And for an on-time landing, over to you, William. Fantastic. Thank you all very much. And thank you, everyone, uh, for attending this fantastic uh, beginning to this year's conference. We will now take a, uh, a break for lunch. Uh, please plan on logging back in at 2 p.m. Paris time um, and join us for an afternoon filled with timely presentations and a special accessibility uh, award session that will uh, take place this afternoon. Um, and you will be able to vote on uh, the annual Airport PRM Leadership Conference Accessibility Award. Uh, thank you very much, Roberto, for uh, helping guide us through the morning. And I look forward to seeing you this afternoon. See everyone at 2 p.m. Thank you and have a great lunch.